Hi, and welcome to the first session. So this is mainly about explorative data analysis and statistical inference with the wage one data set of Voltridge. To get the Voltridge data, go to install and type in Voltridge install and then once it's installed then it's fine and in the second round you have to load the data set for loading you type in library voltage and as you can see here this is the signal that r has already installed the package voltage via help wage one you get access to the documentation of the wage one data set in r Via view, which one you get an overview on the data set, and via summary, which one you get some summary statistics, string, and also inspect, which one are standard commands to get an overview on. The data set. If you just want to have some summary statistics with respect to one variable, such as the wage variable, you type in summary wage, and this typically does not work. So please, the magic command is attach wage one, so attach the data set, and then in the second round, the summary wage command works, and then you see minimum max, first, third quartile, median, and mean. It's kind of summary statistics for wage, and you can do the same for education. I want to focus on wage and education in a typical mincer sense uh, to get some uh, insights in that. Typing in hist for, and for wage and for education, you get the histograms, and uh, with uh, GF, uh, lower bar bar and then in parentheses tilde education or tilde wage then you get the bar diagrams so this here is a bar diagram uh, for the discrete numeric variable education so typically you use uh, these bar diagrams for categorical Var uh, variables, but here it makes also sense just to see that 12 years of schooling is here pretty often observed. Please use box plot wage, box plot education for the box plots. I don't show that here in the video, but it'll show the covariance visualized in the scatter plot. So that's the scatter plot with education wage that visualizes the covariance. However, the covariance, here you see the variance covariance matrix, the covariance, uh, let's say between wage and education is 4.15. However, the number depends on the matrix and therefore it's not standardized. Uh, you better standardize and then you end up with the correlation coefficient and if you typed in COR and wage one, you get the correlation coefficients that are standardized between minus one and plus one. Uh, standardization is quite important. You standardize deviations from the mean by uh, the standard deviation uh, to get uh, the set value. And for causal effects, you typically uh, measure these causal effects uh, as a part of a standard deviation sigma and sigma is nothing else than the standard deviation sd and here uh, we standardize the covariance so the covariance depends on mat matrix and uh, if you want to get rid of the matrix then you have to standardize the covariance by standard deviation x times standard deviation y and that yields then the correlation coefficient which can be uh, expressed in a correlation coefficient matrix. Well, we need the covariance uh, with respect to the estimated regression coefficient because 
the estimated co regression coefficient uh, has the covariance, in this case, education wage in the numerator and the variance education in the denominator. So the covariance, the sign of the covariance, not the size, but the sign of the covariance uh, determines the sign of the uh, estimated regression coefficient because uh, the denominator is always zero. So once the numerator is positive, then the regression coefficient, the estimated regression coefficient is also positive. What about statistical inference? Statistical inference, we should differentiate between the sample. Here we have a sample wage one. If you estimate the sample with the method, uh, the ordinal least squares method, which is a, a linear model, then we end up with the estimated regression coefficient. Based on that, we might draw inference on the population. In this case, the population would be the working US population. And we then check a hypothesis, in this case, the beta one equals zero hypothesis uh, that is here uh, shown in uh, population values and you, you want to uh, reject it and if it's significant, if the regression coefficient is significant, then we can reject the age naught. So if our null hypothesis is age naught beta one equals zero, so that there's no relationship between wage and education, uh, we want to do an empirical estimation using OLS, so the linear model, and then we regress wage on education given the sample, which is wage one, and the OLS then yields two estimations, uh, the estimated regression coefficient beta one hat and the estimated intercept beta zero hat. So the estimated regression coefficient is in this case 0.54, which is covariance education uh, wage uh, divided by uh, variance education, or in, in matrix algebra it looks like x prime x inverse times x prime y, and the intercept is just mean of the endogenous variable, which is in this case wage, minus the beta one hat times the mean of the uh, exogenous variable, which is in this case education, then you end up with a regression equation for the regression line. Regression line is a line with a slope of 0.54 and the intercept is negative, so it starts here. The interpretation is, of course, one additional year of schooling yields and on average, an increase of uh, average hourly wage of 0.54 Citrus Perios. So in R, the regression line looks like that, and we get it via plot model. So the command is plot model, then the regression equation, and then uh, the data set. So this is necessary to insert the data set unless it doesn't work. So what about significance? So we have several measures to see that. So significance codes, p-value, estimated, standard errors, t-value, 95% confidence interval, which includes set values. And simple rules, at least in the very beginning, we work with these simple rules. Well, once the regression uh, coefficient is twice the standard error, then beta one hat is significant. Once the p-value is below 5%, then the regression coefficient is significant. Once the t-value, which is a ratio between the estimated regression coefficient and the estimated standard error, is above two, so if this is the p-value is above two, then uh, the regression coefficient is significant. So in research, we start with a research question. Uh, for example, here, does education increase wages? Um, and we develop the 
uh, based on theory, in this case it would be the human capital theory hypothesis, uh, in this case it's the null hypothesis, b1 equals zero, so there's no, no relationship between wage and education, and the alternative hypothesis that there is a relationship between these two is either positive or negative, we don't know. Uh, we expect, of course, a positive one, and we want to reject dh naught. So what we do in empirical analysis is first explorative data analysis, so that's what I've shown, hist, box plot, scatter plot, correlation coefficient, variance covariance matrix, bar diagram is necessary, um, and um, uh, or maybe also core plot. So I have a video on that also on my channel. And then in a second step, we do the econometric analysis, in this case, a very simple uh, OLS regression. In this case, the re result of a simple regression, that's of course not true in the sense that it makes uh, overall sense, it's just an example, a toy example. Here we uh, reject H naught, and uh, then beta one hat is significant based on a p-value that is smaller than 5% and all the other measures show the same. So at the end of the day, there is a positive relationship between education and wage, see there is parigos, and that's a, a starting point of uh, research. Of course, in reality, we would add much more control variables to see what's really going on.